Historic concentrations of dust have been discovered in the ice cores drilled from the deep ice sheets of Antarctica. The ice is so thick in Antarctica that it yields historic samples that take us back in time for more than a half a million years. The illustration shown here covers the last four Ice Age cycles in this time frame. It is interesting to note in this illustration that the plotted dust data spikes dramatically during the lateral part of each glacial period. The dustiness continues from this point on and increases right to the start of the next interglacial period. When the interglacial period starts, the dustiness abruptly ends. The dust volumes that we see plotted here are evidently not trivial. The dust volume in the ice in Antarctica appears to be vastly larger than what is carried in the dust clouds that are routinely whipped up in the Sahara Desert at the present time. These are the largest long-distance dust flows. The dust is carried all the way across the Atlantic to the Amazon. While the giant dust flows do affect thunderstorms, they have no significant global climate effects. Nor have these dust rivers ever reached Antarctica. In contrast, the dust volume that was laid down at Antarctica during the Ice Ages was so great that it did have a dramatic cooling effect. The plotting of the dust volume shows clearly that in every case the large dust volumes coincide with colder times of the Ice Age climate. This coincidence of large dust volumes with massive cooling tells us that we are looking at very large dust volumes indeed, which are evidently globally extended throughout the atmosphere to have the measured climatic consequences. The comparison raises two very big questions. Number one. Where did the enormous volume of dust come from? Number two, why did the dust show up only halfway through the glacial periods? If the dust had come from the world's deserts, it wouldn't have taken the dust tens of thousands of years to show up in Antarctica. One answer might be that the large ice accumulations during the Ice Age, over tens of thousands of years, would have changed the weight distribution on the surface of the Earth so dramatically that major volcanic eruptions would have occurred. However, the largest volcanic eruption in recorded history the Mount Tambora eruption in Indonesia in 1815 did only have a minor global climatic effect. The gigantic eruption that left this enormous crater in the aftermath gave us only a year without a summer. No evidence exists that such super eruptions have occurred almost continuously for tens of thousands of years during the glacial times. This means that the volumes of dust that we find in the ice cores in Antarctica that were evidently so large globally that they had a major effect on the global climate had evidently not come from volcanic eruptions but had come from a vastly larger source. The answer to this puzzle as to where the large volumes of dust might have come from that we see in Antarctic ice and also see reflected in dramatic global cooling during the Ice Age itself 
over long periods, not surprisingly points to space, especially the space that surrounds the Earth. The inner solar system, to including Mars, is surrounded by a huge belt of billions or even trillions of astrophysical objects that range in size from dust particles to boulders, with a very few several hundred kilometers in size. These asteroids are so widely dispersed that several spacecraft traversed the belt without collisions occurring. Nevertheless, a large volume of material exists in the belt and associated clusters of objects. The connection of the asteroid belt with the Ice Age cycles is a critical one for our present time. The connection is located in electrodynamics. Here we encounter another paradox, a rather amazing paradox. When we pursue this paradox, some extremely critical aspects come to light that are of existentially critical importance to the whole of humanity in our time, in which the paradox is located. In order to resolve the paradox, we need to look beyond the Earth, to the nature of the solar system and its operating dynamics, where an element enters the scene that is almost universally ignored in astrophysics. This is the element of electrodynamics. If we look at the solar system only from the standpoint of orbital mechanics, reflecting the orbits of the planets, an impossible paradox comes to light. The paradox is that the planets should orbit more closely to the Sun than they do. The known data about the orbits of the planets tells us that their measured orbital velocity is only 71% of what is required for a stable orbit in their path. This huge gap is a paradox. The paradox suggests that the orbits of the planets are electromagnetically assisted by the effects of the solar primal fields, which are the huge electromagnetic cosmic structures that presently boost the powering of the Sun to the current interglacial intensity, which gives us the warm climate that we have enjoyed for the last 12,500 years. Our Sun is a plasma star that is powered by an interstellar plasma stream that is tightly focused onto the Sun by primal fields, as the stream flows through the solar system. The primal fields form by the pinch effects of the Lord's force. Beyond the threshold level, they form complex electromagnetic structures that efficiently concentrate the plasma stream. When the process was replicated in laboratory experiments, a high rate of concentration was achieved that also produced an energy dissipation on the ecliptic plane, where in the solar system the planets orbit. In the solar system, the energy dissipation flows in the form of the heliospheric current shade that flows from the Sun to way past the farthest orbit. It should also be noted that whenever electric currents flow in space, the currents are subject to the pinch effects and form node points. On the concentric flat plane, these node points are circular structures. There, as the space expands geometrically, that the current sheet expands into, the node rings would have to form in geometrically spaced progression. 
that this really happens is evident in the geometrically increased orbits of the planets. This means that the orbits of the planets are electromagnetically organized in the ecliptic in line with the node rings right from the beginning when the solar system was formed and have been subsequently maintained and assisted by them. This includes the asteroids in the asteroid belt. Now we need to ask ourselves what happens when the primal fields collapse, which causes the glacial periods. Ice age cycles are caused by the solar system flipping between high intensity periods with primal fields in operation and low intensity periods with no primal fields operating. This means for the Earth that its climate flips between warm interglacial climates, the only type of climates that we have ever experienced, and its extremely cold and harsh glacial climates in which the Earth is largely uninhabitable. The same dramatic effect happens to the orbits of the planets during glacial times when the primal fields do not form. The orbits will then be no longer assisted. While the temporary loss of the assistance of the orbits won't affect the hugely massive planets, the loss will dramatically affect the tiny asteroid objects in the asteroid belt, especially the very small and light objects. The small asteroid objects have a vastly larger surface to mass ratio than the planets have. This different ratio makes them more susceptible to cosmic drag. By the effect of the cosmic drag, the smaller objects drift increasingly to lower orbits and eventually enter the orbit of the Earth. It is not unreasonable to assume that after 50,000 years of this gradual orbital decay by the asteroid orbits, the Earth will experience a large increase in asteroid intrusions into its atmosphere, where they would disintegrate into dust that gradually falls out onto the land. The process would continue till the primal fields form anew, by which the orbits become ordered again. Against this background, the dust accumulations in the Antarctic ice and the corresponding climate cooling are not an enigma. This recognition takes the subject of the digital ice age out of the landscape of mere academic concerns and places it under the table of the immediate practical existential concerns. The dust cycle recognition makes it clear that the ice ages are not mechanistic phenomena but are digital phenomena that result from the cyclical collapse of the sun's primal fields, with the corresponding loss of the suns being boosted to the interglacial levels. When the interglacial primed condition is lost to the sun, the Earth reverts back to being largely an ice planet, that is uninhabitable by today's standard, with a few rare exceptions. While numerous elements of evidence points to the next phase shift to glaciation occurring in the 2050s time frame, the large volume of this evidence hasn't so far stirred any actions 
towards humanity recognizing the challenge before it to build itself a new world with technological infrastructures that enable it to continue to live on an ice planet with a 7 billion world population. Until the critical recognition of the digital nature of the Ice Age phenomena is made, nothing will inspire humanity to build itself a new technological world for continued living. The ice dust cycles are significant in this context in that they add one more element of evidence towards the critical recognition in society of the forces that shape our world and shape the immediacy and enormity of the resulting transformation of the earth that is as close as a mere 30 years distant and which is enormous in scope. This makes the dust cycle evidence relevant to the present as another imperative to reach for the unprecedented opportunity that society thereby has to create itself a new world on a creative scale where the term gigantic is too small a term to define it. The ice dust recognition adds one more element to the needed breakout from the current small-minded world to the new world of the gigantic that defines the beginning of a new era of human living on Earth. Ironically, the dust cycles have already been closely linked with the near extinction of humanity by the harshness of their effects that make the cold of the Ice Age still colder. Archaeology tells us of a major population decline that began roughly 195,000 years ago, which coincides with the first major dust spike in that period. The resulting dust-cooled period is termed in archaeology the marine isotope stage 6. It is believed that the human population diminished dramatically during this period from more than 10,000 adult individuals to as low as just a few hundred. It is believed that the major population bottleneck occurred in the period after 165,000 years ago, until the technology was developed to live off the sea. Evidence for this technological breakthrough is found in South Africa, in a place called Pinnacle Point, where a group of caves termed PP13B have been discovered. The people living in these caves may have been the remnant of a collapsing humanity that all of our modern humanity came from, who saved themselves and the future of humanity with them, with the created technologies for living off the sea. Of course, the people who became nearly extinct by the harshness of the time had no way of knowing what forces had gripped the earth, much less had they developed the capacity to lift themselves above the effect of these forces and to flourish in spite of them. We have all of these capabilities today. But ironically, we close our eyes to them. We know with an extremely high degree of certainty as the result of numerous scientific projects, measurements and observations that the sun is in a near free fall collapse, weakening towards the phase shift to glaciation happening in the 2050s. 
where we know all these relevant facts and have made enormous efforts to discover them. Paradoxically, we close our eyes and say that this isn't happening, that nothing is happening that isn't politically correct. The irony is that we cannot avoid what is happening. The collapse of the primal fields will happen as it always has happened. The universe rolls on as it has in the past. The one thing that will lift us out of the doldrums of living with closed minds and eyes is the type of breakthrough in recognition that may be termed living in the complex domain where one sees with the mind past the evidence to the principles that the evidence is an expression of. That's the type of seeing that had distinguished the great geniuses of the past, from Pythagoras to Plato to Cusa to Gauss and so on. With their approach to looking at reality, we can look at the dust cycles in the ice and see behind this evidence the digital nature of the solar system and its effects on the orbits and on the climate of the Earth and the resulting imperative for us to create ourselves a new world with the needed technologies and power for living on an ice planet that the Earth will become in the 2050s. In the complex domain, we can see the principles that shape the future and understand their imperatives for the present. On this wider platform, we can discern our opportunity to step far beyond the merely necessary towards the superb and the sublime.